in foul trouble. DJ Burns can do that. Win the turnover battle. NC State's done that the last two games here in the tournament. Crashed the offensive glass. 17 offensive rebounds in their win over Syracuse. And also, you can't be scared. And for the Wolfpack, ain't nobody scared, OB. They have forced a ton of turnovers here. We'll talk a lot about that. As we are underway, Duke winning the opening tip. Duke at 24 and 7. NC State 19 and 14 coming in. Mitchell trying to get it downstairs, and Burns got a hand on it. And a quick turnover right there. The turnover early, and can the Wolfpack capitalize on it? Get a good look. Duke did a great job getting back defensively, not giving up a transition bucket. Casey Morcell up high. NC State forcing 35 turnovers in the first two games here in Washington, D.C. to fall away Marcel, and that won't drop. Mitchell will fly down the rebound. Nice defensive stand by Proctor on that possession. Filipowski with the touch. Working on Diara on the baseline. And off his foot and out of play. Now, NC State holding off Louisville and a stunning performance by Sky Clark in the first one. He had 36 points in round one, but they won the game. NC State did 94-85. That was without DJ Horn. He returned last night. As you get a look at their starting lineup. And there'll be no DJ Horn in the starting lineup. Kevin Key's going to stick with what's gotten him here to this point. Burns is it taken away by Filipowski. Now Horn beginning on the bench. As Proctor gets it out high, long one coming by Roach off the back of the iron. And a foul and a rebounding fray. As you get a look at Kevin Keats, seventh year at the helm for NC State. And Kenny Engineer, a couple more wins here in D.C. That foul will go on Burns, by the way. That'll be number one. John Shire has had success in this tournament, hasn't he? He was the MVP of the ACC tournament in 09. Yeah, and the first person to ever win. An ACC tournament as a player and a head coach. Hubert Davis trying to capitalize on that this year. And Duke, the reigning champion of the ACC tournament. On the baseline, Mitchell fights for his miss. And he's fouled from behind. Offensive rebound for Mark Mitchell. And that's one of the area, and that's going to be the first on Diara. But both the bigs right now for NC State picking up a foul early. And of course, when you consider DJ Burns and his reports have been on the floor, as well as DR, that's one of the areas they can't get in foul trouble against this Duke front line. DJ Burns, who poured in 27 points against Duke on the 4th of March, 12 for 19 shooting. But for much of that game, he was a one man band. Duke completely shut off the three point attempts and the perimeter game. Once again, Burns going for it, and that'll be knocked out of bounds with 18.28 to go here in the first half, and be on the board yet. Obi, I believe we've seen Kyle Filipowski on the ground already three times in this game. The tone has been set. It's going to be physical here in the quarterfinal round. Jared McCain, by the way, the outstanding freshman, took a shot in the pregame warm-ups. He butted heads accidentally with a teammate. That was Jalen Blakes. Angel will have more on that coming up. Taylor drives the lane off the window, but no, and Filipowski picks up the loose ball. Tyrese Proctor here. There's Duke missing a freshman guard in Caleb Foster. He's out with an injury. A oh, nice swing pass. Mitchell's underneath at a very tough angle. Couldn't, couldn't finish it. Yeah, you got to finish that simply for the highlight factor. That was a beautiful dime from Filipowski, wrapping it around a defender. To give Mitchell a good look. Ah, uh, the top tens that might have been. Right? Uh, yeah, exactly. OB. Taylor. Last six games, he has been absolutely on fire, averaging 19 points a contest. And another turnover. This one is not off to an artistic start. Here's McCain. And too strong. There's Duke just getting on the floor for the first time in the tournament after the double bye. And I also believe, even though North Carolina State has played a couple games, there are a little bit of jitters in this one. They understand, of course, it's always different when you're playing against the Blue Devils. Diara lifts. They're too strong. But we've seen sloppy basketball from both these teams to start the game. Three minutes in, neither team has scored. Proctor trying to put an end to that, but can't. 
Purcell with the rebound, the former Virginia star. He'll zip it downstairs to the arm. He loses control of it. These two teams are 0 for 9 combined, and nobody seems to want to hang on to the ball. If the bounce in the lane, McCain will draw the foul. Whenever you play against the Wolfpack, one thing you have to determine, how are you going to guard D.J. Burns? Are you going to double team, or are you going to allow him to play one-on-one? -on -one? Over, you mentioned 27 points for him in the first matchup between these two. Duke guarded a man-to-man, one-on-one for the majority of that. But you see now they're going to be able to bring the double team throughout this game to not allow him to get going. 31 minutes for him in that game, allowing him to stay on the floor and operate offensively. Purcell with the foul a moment ago. And D.J. Horn reporting for duty for the Wolfpack. Purcell will step off for a moment. Horn, the top scorer for the Pack, 17 points a game, 43% from three. He came back after missing the Louisville game in round one to have 16 last night, which included a dunk. Yeah, it did. We asked him pregame how he was feeling. He said he was feeling good. Got some medicine, got a good massage on that hip flexor. I said, you still bouncing? He said, oh, absolutely. I can't wait to get another one. So he wants to show out on the break, but had all 16 of those points in the second half last night. Ben Middlebrooks into the contest, off for Horn. Taylor with shot clock down to seven. Here's O'Connell to fire and knocks it down, and NC State is finally on the scoreboard. Yeah, the first made field goal of this game. The only other points were Jerry McCain at the free throw line. I don't think anyone would have picked that four minutes into this one with these two high-powered offenses. Filipowski getting a lot of attention and thrown away again. Duke looking like they haven't played in about a month at this point, and switched in by Horn as he will drill it from the wing. And D.J. Horn not waiting around for the second half to get his scoring going. As soon as he comes off the bench, he's able to get a three-point field goal to go the first of the game for either of these teams. McCain over the top. And up and in. Nicely run play. And again, Filipowski going down. But, but the presence of mind by Flip to not land and bring that down. He knows where he is on the court, already by the basket, lays it up before the help defense can get there. Man, does he take a lot of punishment on a nightly basis. McCain harassing Horn. D.J. Horn to grab. And carry North Carolina flips it up and a whistle too. As he made the basket, he'll be off to the line. And NC State grabs a 7-4 advantage. Our ACC tournament quarterfinal, NC State. And Shire on the Wolfpack. Go. Coach Shire told me that NC State is a different team now because they're playing more confident and connected, especially on the defensive end. Through the first two games of this tournament, they forced 35 turnovers. They've also collected 23 steals. He said they want to make it a track meet. We want to make sure that we're controlling the pace. In their last meeting, they only gave up five turnovers. They already started the game with three in this one. So he's saying if we can contain their guards, we can end State Cinderella Quest. Well, last three possessions, NC State's cleaned it up. They've gone three for three. Their first six, they went 0 for three and turned it over three times. And no coincidence that that three for three has happened since DJ Horn checked into the game. He has two of those field goals himself. The other by Michael O'Connell with the first field goal of the game for the Wolfpack, but they seem to have settled in. And that's often an advantage for a team that's played on this floor already. We mentioned it's been a while since the Blue Devils have been in this type of competitive action. Kane, we're in advantage. Above that right eye, taking that pop and a head back. Going to be on the line there. Seven was on the shot clock. 14:39 to go in a half. Hobie Flip has made a number of nice passes in tight quarters. However, Duke has not been able to finish. Give Diara the middle was a lot of credit defending the rim. Roach from the elbow, no. Rebound by Taylor. Taylor's really been their scoring star. Most of these recent games, these last five or six, he's been the man for the Wolfpack. Yeah, averaging close to 19 points over their last six games. He said back-to-back 18-point games here in the tournament. Kane on the drive, O'Connell sticking with him. 
Ryan Young, the 16 grad, about ready to check in for John Shire. John Stewart, wearing number 13 for Duke, had a terrific game against these guys in Raleigh as he came off the bench for 12 and 5. Yeah, Sean Stewart playing more minutes down the stretch here for the Blue Devils as John Sire has started to grow a lot of confidence in the freshman. And he's made that pay off for his coach. McCain using that lightning quick step to get inside for two. And that's an area where Jared McCain can often be effective with. We know about his three-point shooting, but when he's able to get into the paint and attack, making plays for himself or others, that adds another dimension to this Blue Devil team. Go to the All-ACC rookie team. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Diara is right as he goes for the slam and is screamed out. But a play like that for him, OB, just energizes not only the Wolfback, but himself. He's going to the offensive glass now. You're going to have to worry about him on every possession where his shot goes up. Last night, DJ Burns was imploring him, dunk it. Don't give it up, dunk it. He got the message, OB. I think he did. Filipowski on a nifty spin will finish down. That's a tough move by Flip right there. Recognize there's no double team coming. Showing off his strength in that seven-foot frame to finish easily over the top of the yard. Taylor outside the three, backs it up. He steps back and fires. Got it. He wanted badly to take that shot, and he drilled it. You're absolutely right, OB. He was not passing that basketball. He made his mind up early. He was getting a look. Walsh a little too high on Proctor's fingers and out of play. The big fellas battling it out. Mohamed Diara finishing strong. And Kyle Filipowski recognizing no double teams coming. I'm going one-on-one, -on -one and I'm going to win this battle. NC State with a victory last night on a big run in the second half. And they rolled Syracuse 83 to 65. Let's go to Angel. Well, guys, with Muhammad Diar right now, he's acknowledging Ramadan, and he cannot eat or drink anything from sun's sun up to sundown. So the sunset in D.C. today was actually 7.15. He checked out of the ball game. He's going to go to the end of the bench, meet with the nutritionist. She says she'll begin to give him fluids throughout the game, but wanting to make sure that he has enough smoothies throughout the game, they're going to be feeding him. Does a lot of stretching in games, too. That's going to be a traveling violation by Ryan Young and another turnover for Duke. Respect the discipline of this young man. And more importantly, the way the Wolfpack faithful have supported him and the training and the nutrition staff knowing exactly when they can give him. Because, once again, during Ramadan, he can't drink anything during that time either. So, of course, playing basketball, you need to stay hydrated. And seven offensive rebounds last night. Really showed up in a big way. Burns trying to get in close and takes the hit as well. The Balletic 6-9 grab getting in tight and drops it in over the shoulder. Him to the back. He actually returned with a little patch over his eye. He actually received three stitches. But the most impressive thing about this, and Corey, I know you'll appreciate this, he had a smile on his face the entire time. That's why Coach Shire says he's the swag and energy of this roster. He is absolutely angel, but you know, I blame Jared for that because he's playing defense. Why are you playing defense for pregame, OB? There's no point in it. Actually, before the game, you said, why is he even playing defense in the game? Yeah, exactly. Dr. Mitchell will slam that down. Beautifully run by the Blue Devils. I'll be in the huddle prior to this, during the timeout. Jeremy Roach was talking to Mark Mitchell specifically about finishing strong. I saw Jeremy Roach make the gesture, go up and dunk it, and you see Mark Mitchell taking that leadership from the captain and paying off on the floor. He's had some giant games this season. Become a very valuable guy for Coach Shire. O'Connell on the baseline. He's walled off. Diara on the face. Shot clock down to four. Burns straight on. Yes. He's got such a nice touch. Yeah, that's it, OB. He just puts it on the rim so softly. Even when it does hit the rim, he still has a chance to go down because he's got that soft touch. North Carolina, such an impressive win today. An awesome victory over Florida State, 92 to 67 in our first quarter final. Baycott with 14 and 10. RJ Davis, 18 points. Filipowski leaning in. Flips it. Yes, it'll go. We are wanting a call on that one as Filipowski looked as though he extended that forearm, however. 
He already did a great job getting back up as you see Filipowski battling with DJ Burns and that's exactly how you have to attack a great score. John Shire in the huddle. We're being too antsy. Calm down. So what's going on? Finish it. Please. We don't have to come down and take quick shots. Let it happen. The thing where we can't get hurt is not talking down here. You got to play every single play on defense. And then on offense. Nice find underneath as DJ Horn's able to get his third field goal, but on the underneath out of bounds, that's one of the things that John Shire was talking about. They've got to communicate defensively. That shouldn't happen. Roach gets it up there and a whistle with 10.04 remaining in the half. And the other quarterfinal today was Pitt knocking off Wake 81 to 69. Maybe a critical blow for Wake Forest as far as the NCAA tournament. Pitt never trailed in that one. 19 to 12 NC State foul will go on Marcel that is number two and so Roach to shoot he will shoot two at 87 percent at the line and rattles in number one we have Everything covered on Selection Sunday again. It all starts at 6 Eastern Sports Center at ESPN. Reese and the guys. Look at the men's field of 68. The brackets announced, followed by bracketology. And at 8, the women's field of 68 revealed. Bracketology coming to you in a complete breakdown immediately following. Well, I believe it's my guy Dan Schulman now refers to it as it's actually Reese, Andrea, and the guys now. So it's not just about Reese and the guys anymore as my little sister Andrea Carter is now in the mix. So, you know, I think Jay Bills didn't necessarily like being Reese and the guys. When, <laughs> <laughs> when well, that's what, that's what the promo says, so we're going to have to edit that. No, we got to edit that. That has to have to be edited. Burns short for Lepowski. Had the rebound come right to him. Roach with a misfire and a big rebound by Diarro. Michael O'Connell's had a really good tournament. 16 against Louisville at 16 against Syracuse as well. He's got it beyond the three point line. Horn will let it fly. Again, Duke crashing the glass. Yeah, Duke limiting NC State to one opportunity. Straight on. Oh, absolutely bottoms by Tyrese Crocker's 37% beyond that line. But that's what's so dangerous about the Blue Devil team. They are more dangerous in transition shooting the three. Now, with no Caleb Foster available, still out with injury, they don't have as much firepower, but with the three guys on the floor, they are still dangerous from beyond the arc. They'll get Proctor, or I should say Roach, for that foul. That'll be number one by Jeremy Roach. A simple, quick kick ahead, and as the defense rotates towards Jeremy Roach, Tyrese Proctor steps in confidently and knocks down the three ball. And when he is making shots, it takes this Duke Blue Devil team to a completely different level, especially when he is confident on offense. Well, Duke is starting to do that, right? They started out one for ten. They've made five of their last six shots. So Duke is awake. Taylor. Diara, he will fire that up there, but too strong. So once again, they're one and done. Filipowski bouncing for Mitchell. Gets it out for power. He can't connect. And reaching in, they'll get McCain underneath. And as he commits the foul, that's going to be two on him. Yeah. And we mentioned no Caleb Foster. So now the depth for Duke on the, in the backcourt is nowhere near what it was. Caleb Foster, who pretty much single-handedly won the game against Michigan State for the Blue Devils, still out with injury. And so, of course, the depth in the backcourt is not the same as they've had the majority of the season. Taylor off the fake finds the lane. The teardrop, no. Filipowski <laughs> running the floor, but can't finish it. How about this racehorse style? It's O'Connell to lay it in. Back and forth they go. One well, thing's for certain, when the Wolfpack have an opportunity to transition, they're going to take advantage of it. Jane Taylor didn't even see the outlet pass from DR, but he put it so perfectly in place, he was able to pick it up his stride. Lebowski slams it down after a dribble. Just kind of opened up for him. But Flip has been very aggressive to start this game. 
And I love seeing that from him. When he is this aggressive, then of course he puts so much pressure on the opponent's defense. Eight points for him. All ACC first team. Also Sporting News third team All-American. Burns runs into a wall of whites. Off the fake, dribble down horn. Got it! A three-pointer. Devlin. 43% beyond the arc. 24-19. Proctor looking to answer. And now it's heating up. It's heating up now. We knew the offense would arrive. It was just a little late arriving. They took the first four minutes off. But now both these teams shooting at a high clip and playing at a much faster pace. Titans up to a two-point game. Under seven to go in the opening half. Burns and Filipowski toe-to-toe. They are chasing down the loose ball and on the line. He'll turn it over. Angel told us, OB, they want to make it attract me in the Wolf Pack. Off a miss, turning good defense into great offense, playing fast break basketball exactly to the delight of Kevin Keats. And we wish him nothing but the best in retirement. Won't be the same without Joe. Meanwhile, NC State with a 24-22 advantage here on the Duke Blue Devils. First time they played 10 days ago, Duke turned it over five times in the entire game. Already turned over five times in this one. And three of those in the first couple of minutes of the game. So they've settled in offensively right now. Both teams have found a rhythm. But it'll be interesting to see if either of these teams can get any separation. But OB, I would love to see this one be a nip and tuck affair for the entire 40 minutes. Filipowski on the move on DR to the left hand. That's tough to stop. He has put North Carolina State on notice. They're going to have to deal with Kyle Filipowski this entire game. When he starts going off the bounce, and every move has been aggressive. Defensively, too. Already three steals as he connects again. And that's 12 points. That's been a difference maker here. Oftentimes, I believe he's kind of been deferring to the guys on the perimeter, but right now, Kyle Polkowski letting everyone know who the best player on the floor is. And leading Duke on a seven-zip run. Horn will fire from the elbow, and it's a round and out. Over the top, Mitchell, good catch and a slam. And another strong finish from Mitchell. Message received on the sideline. Stop trying to lay the basketball up. Dunk everything on the interior. Force them to foul you to take away the opportunity. Abrams went down, got back up, caught the pass. Going to work on Filipowski. It spins out. Almost made it. But that's going to be the second foul on Filipowski. And that's the only way that you can stop him in this game is to get him in foul trouble and get him out of the game because off the bounce, he is attacking Muhammad Diarra with no chance on that possession. And then defensively, Kyle Filipowski getting into the passing lane and great body control to be able to finish. And even if he didn't miss OB, he was in great position to be able to go back up on that second jump and tap it in. So Middlebrooks to the line, the transfer from Clemson. And the 73% foul shooter rattles in the first one. And now Filipowski with that second foul will step out with 526 left in the half. And also Jared McCain on the bench with those two fouls as well. So you've got a lot of firepower for the Blue Devils sitting on the bench watching. And they finally developed some type of offensive rhythm. See if NC State can take advantage of it with those two guys on the bench. Foul line's been a big weapon in this tournament for the pack. They were 20 for 24 against Syracuse last night, and they had made 53 of 64 in two games. At the line a lot. Yeah, that's always going to be important, especially this time of year, and which should be a close game is taking care of business at the free throw line. Don't want to give away points. Roach out high. Roach to attack. No opening there as they sealed him. Shot clock's at three. Mitchell heaves it. And here comes NC State. They're five and two all time in the ACC tournament games in Washington, D.C. So they've liked it here. Middlebrooks. O'Connell with a short range jumper, though. 
T.J. Powers, 6'9", freshman, getting some minutes here in the first half for the Duke Blue Devils. Roach bouncing it for Young. Kick out for Power. Here it comes. It glances off the iron, and Horn wants to go. The iron is two. Oh, couldn't get it to go. Second effort, though, tapped out for Horn. Here's Diara from the corner. That's why I do one. Yeah, that's why I do. Is the plan all along. Why make the two when you can get three? And a timeout. Give Jeremy Roach a lot of credit getting back defensively, forcing Diara to miss the layup. However, the offensive rebound gives them an opportunity to step out. Their first offensive rebound of the game, and Diara capitalizes with the corner three. Hold it, shooter. Three national champion, North Carolina State Wolfpack, Jim Valvano, and all three guys, Danny Ferry in that backcourt for NC State, all representing the DMV extremely well, and the Matha High School as well. Jared McCain back on the floor now for Duke. These last four minutes before the break here at Capital One Arena in Washington. Pass inside for Young. They'll kick it out. Proctor's the open shooter. Got a tremendous look. Yeah, Bobby, I think Duke has been a little too unselfish at times. Jeremy Roach should have taken that three in the corner. I mean, again, not that it wasn't a good look for Proctor, but Roach is a better shooter. Also, we saw them pass up an easy layup early to kick out for a three that they didn't make. Rolling inside, Middlebrook, Sam denied, but a whistle, and Mitchell can't believe it. But I believe with this one, Clarence Armstrong had the foul down low. So before Middlebrooks was even able to elevate, the foul was down low on this possession. You see as Mitchell comes across, watch. You see the left hand yes. hooking on that arm. That was a great call by Clarence Armstrong. He was right on top of it, a great position to be able to see that. But I love how players, when you, because you clearly know Mark Mitchell, you actually fouled him. And then, so the reaction of no way. Yeah, no, we actually saw that. That was a clean call. Certainly got him with the arm there. Middlebrooks at the line. 6'10 junior out of Fort Lauderdale. And drops it in. So, two point lead for the pack. As they look for the upset tonight and look for their third consecutive win here in Washington. Trying to play their way into the semifinals. And hope as we keep track, it's been a 6-0 run since Kostolopowski picked up that second foul. But Jerry McCain back on the floor playing with two. McCain had to flip it up in the air after the save right to Middlebrooks. Taylor shut off that baseline. And he's on the line right in front of the Duke bench and he turns it over. We have seen that call more in college basketball this year than I ever remember before. You know what? It's really been the last few years since the NCAA moved the three-point line back from 19-9 to 21 and changed whatever it is now. It's I don't been happening more and more. Yeah, but you got less space over on that sideline as, of course, the three-pointer has become even more important throughout this game. You guys are playing with bigger feet this year. Yeah, I think that's it. Or maybe the shoes are just bigger. Proctor with a pull-up from 16. You want to attack. Horn. Yeah, if you're DJ Horn, you want to attack. Max Burns, no. But you want to put Jared McCain in any action, see if you can pick up that third foul. McCain hopping into the lane. Can't stick it. NC State talked about wanting to push it, push it, push it. They wanted to track me tonight as much as they could get it. High rebound for Proctor. And Mitchell will swing it. Roach. Off the dribble, guarded tight there by Taylor. And coming up on two minutes before halftime. Mitchell from the corner. He will drill that one. That's a two-pointer. Mark Mitchell much more decisive in the shots that he needs to take and when he needs to drive it. That job, tough time doing a great job recognizing that Proctor did all the work. All he needed to do was shoot the basketball. Look at how far away Burns is from the basket, starting this move on Young. Racing over McCain for the double. He flips it up there, but it won't drop. 
But Duke not choosing to double team until DJ Burns puts the ball on the floor. McCain, yes, that'll roll in. And Duke back in front by two. Points in the paint. Duke has doubled up NC State. Filipowski getting into foul trouble, but he was on fire before he went to the bench. Shot clock at eight. Taylor. Burns. Shot clock down to two. O'Connor, long one. Got it. A triple. But another dime from DJ Burns. Giving O'Connell just enough time to get that shot off over the outstretched arm of Mitchell. Foul here. We'll 45.1 to go. Proctor will fire. Mitchell hanging on to the rebound. Kept it alive. And a second effort here for Duke. Jeremy Roach, 14 points a game. Proctor with a shot clock to five. It opens up for Pitiaro with the rejection. Now here's the decision. Do you make a play? Young did. Young made that play right there. And if you're Taylor, you're looking at that clock. If you don't have a definite advantage, you pull that back out and get the last shot of the half. Taylor tries to take it to the rim, however, Ryan Young having no parts of it as Kevin Keats calls the timeout to set up the last possession of the first half. Doubles. So we'll see what Kevin Keats has drawn up here for a final play in for O'Connell. Seven to get a shot up. They want Horn to touch it. He does. Two to get a shot in the air on the drive. He hits it. Horn at the horn. One thing for certain, OB. DJ Horn, he ain't scared. One thing, he is going to be in attack mode from the time he steps on the floor until the clock says triple zeros. And it says triple zeros to end the first half with D.J. Horn laying on the floor, however, after getting a bucket. Angel with Coach Keats. Perfectly executed. Duke was just two for nine shooting it during that span. Yeah, and it's a different team, both on offense and defense, when Flip is on the bench. But now back on the floor to start this second half. I look to see him be ultra aggressive, knowing how much they need him. And just seconds into the second half, a foul here. D.J. Horn also opening up in the lineup in the second half. He did not start the game. Let's go to Angel. Well, guys, I was catching up with Coach Shire, and he said containing DJ Horn was the game plan coming into the game, and it remains the same way in the second half. He was not pleased with the open looks that he had in transition, especially from the three-point line. So he was just making sure that the team understood where he was on the floor at all times in the second half. And Casey Marcel with a dunk off the inbounds. The second time that NC State's gotten a wide-open look on the underneath inbound plays. Give Kevin Keats and his staff a a lot of credit designing opportunities for his team to get easy buckets. So it's the Wolfpack by five. A lot of contact here as we get underway. Filipowski knocked to the deck. He spent about half of this game <laughs> down on the deck. I don't think that's anything new. We really need a tracker, Obi. How many times has Flip hit the floor? It was probably five times in the first five minutes of this game. We saw him picking himself up off the floor, but it's always going to be physical when you're playing against Fal Kyle Filipowski because he oftentimes initiates the contact, forcing you to have to hit him back. Yeah, I don't think he minds it at all. Diara, his second foul inbounded to Filipowski. He'll spin right into Diara, and he tied him up. No foul there. That's great defense by Diara, and more importantly, not leaving his feet. The possession error will keep it right here for Duke. Off the inbounds for the Blue Devils. Not a glance away. The shot by Proctor. So NC State trying to build on a five-point lead. They are the 10 seed. Horn will lift. Yara came out of nowhere, and he finished it. Got high up over everybody. It's 
took North Carolina State almost the entire first half to get their first offensive rebound after coming off 17 last night. But now you see why DR is so effective. Mitchell on the dribble, left it short. NC State with wins here in D.C. over Louisville and Syracuse. There really haven't been many close games in this tournament yet. I think we're going to have one here, OB. <laughs> I believe this was coming down to the wire because the Wolfpack do not look like they're going away. And, of course, we know the Duke Blue Devils are always up for the fight. I think you're right. It feels that way. Diara tried to roll in and was lucky to save it. Shot clock is at three. And a whistle here, and that'll be an offensive. It's going to go the other way. Keats with an argument. Now Kevin Keats not happy with this as we see Mohamed Diara tight roping the baseline. Stays in bounds, but Horn gets the offensive foul on that one. But what was missed, Jared McCain got away with a foul right there. He actually held Diara, which would have been a dunk. Horn's first foul. And they're going to dare. You see DJ Burns helping, going to dare Mark Mitchell to shoot that three, even though he's knocked down one already. Roach will round it out. And another rebound for Diara. O'Connell for Marcel at 25 in round one against Louisville. Diara working on Mitchell. Gets into that paint. Love this matchup right here, OB. Casey Marcel and Jeremy Rose. Those two guys teamed up to win a Peace Jam championship together along with Armando Baycott. So those guys have a great relationship. McCain. <laughs> NC State by seven. Hard to drive it. And flip it up there. OB, I'll tell you why that was such a smart play by DJ Horn. Jared McCain's playing with two fouls. He understands the importance of Jared McCain, so he's going to put him into action, force him to have to defend. Even before the game, we know that it's been a battle throughout this one, a rivalry of sorts, but it's been fun to see him battling it out tonight, guys. Six points so far for him, two for five shooting. He's got it on the wing. He finds Filipowski for the quick strike. Nice execution by the Blue Devils after the timeout, getting Filipowski an easy look. But when you have a seven footer that can play with such motion like that off the basketball, you get those type of upper things. 14 for Filipowski. We're talking about great footwork and great touch. Burns with another two. The Duke had started out very slowly in the first half, if you recall. They rolled for six, they rolled for five in this half before Filipowski's bucket. Hit like another. Try to go to the other side of the iron. We'll bounce it here and back up top for. Jeremy Roach. Shot clock to seven. And he lost the handle on it. Another turnover for the Blue Devils. And that's the way that this Wolfpack team thrives on offense. They turn you over and then they go down and make you pay for those mistakes. Burns up to set the screen. O'Connell. He's got to go. You got Jeremy Roach. You got to go. That one, DJ Burns went a little too quick, but trying to beat the double team getting there. He's got to take advantage of those opportunities with Roach behind him. Roach, long range, yes, sir. 44% beyond that line. And speaking of taking advantage of opportunities, Jeremy Roach with the cross match gets back. No one picks up a lethal shooter for the Blue Devils on the other end. Warren getting trapped, but he got out of it with a pass. Cross court, O'Connell open. Yes, sir. And answer for the pack. DJ Burns' vision is elite, OB. He, he just surveyed the floor, finding where was the open guy when he saw too many uniforms around him. Proctor to drive it. Mitchell will finish it. Forty six to thirty nine NC State. The winner moving on to the semifinals tomorrow. At nine thirty. Pass getting to O'Connell for a two pointer. 
He's starting to heat up. He's starting to heat up, OB. He is now in double figures. He has played great this tournament. 12 points for O'Connell, five or six from the field, two for two from beyond the three-point line. Number one seed, North Carolina, to take on Pitt in the first semifinal at 7 p.m. tomorrow here from D.C. with Dan Jay and Jess Filipowski running right into Diara, who collects the rebound. Again, I'm going to have to correct you on that one, OB. It's actually Jess with Dan and Jay. I stand yeah, corrected. Yeah, that's it. But again, again we got to point out who the stars are here. There's no question yes. about that. Mm -hmm. Put those guys in their place. Yeah. Roussel, fairly quiet to this point. Slamming on the brakes with a turnaround. Duke looking for some rhythm here. Filipowski tangled up with Morcel has been grabbing that shirt. Mitchell. DJ Burns not going to go out there and guard Mitchell, and that's what you have to do if you're Mark Mitchell. They're going to dare you to shoot those threes, and I believe Ron Groover gave the signal that's going to be a two. Mark Mitchell's foot on the line. They'll look at that one at the next dead ball. Yeah, 23 against Notre Dame, 23 against Wake, and Diara will draw the foul. We've got 13-23 to go in this one. NC State on top of number two Duke. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by lack of defensive communication. As you see, Jared McCain gets hit with the screen. Kyle Filipowski does not switch and take away the opportunity. Trying to stay home with the R allows Casey Morsell to get the easy dunk on the underneath out of bounds play. So Shire was talking about communicating defensively breakdown there and he said that's one thing we can't have regardless of made shots missed shots we can't have that and speaking of made shots Mark Mitchell's bucket before we went to the timeout was ruled a three so the score is now 48 42 in comparison to what was ruled a two on the court and before the timeout McCain picked up his third foul that has Diara at the line 65 percent as he hits number one NC State trying to continue a magic carpet ride here in Washington and play their way into the semifinals tomorrow. The win tonight would be their 20th of the season. Hey, what OB? He does not look like a 65% free throw shooter there. Neither one of those touched the rim. They were all bottoms of the net. Filipowski, a 14-point game. McCain looking inside. He'll spin to the paint for two. And that's the way Flip's going to have to play. Every time he gets an opportunity in the post, if they're not running somewhat at him immediately, he has to look to score. I think Duke has been a little too unselfish in this game, trying to share the basketball and overpass it. His productivity per minute higher than anybody's on the floor tonight. O'Connell with a pull up, too strong. Billabrooks battling for the rebound, freed it, but right to Duke. McCain poked away by Middlebrooks, and no foul, he just deflected it. Great hands by Middlebrooks getting back after the scrum, but flip on the offensive end has been spectacular. Sees no double team coming, recognizing that DR as good as a defender he is, too small for Flip and Flip once again back at it. Going to that left hand, but they can't stop him. He's going to force Kevin Keese to have to bring the double team. 50 to 46. Duke closing the gap. 18 points so far for Kyle Filipowski. Taylor off the middle books. Downstairs going to work. It rolls off the iron. Duke grabbing big time momentum. Roach trying to split the defense. Fouled on the floor. Almost got through those two. But he gets hit with exactly 12 minutes to go. Duke is starting. If not in the semifinals, absolutely in the championship game. Duke to put it in 12 minutes to go. Filipowski 9 for 13 shooting it. The rest of the Duke team 10 for 33. So he could use some help. And the collision is McCain went down, tying up with Horn before the ball was ever inbounded. But McCain looked as though he may have turned his ankle. He was grimacing as he tried to get through that screen. Of course, he was held up by Horn. 
But let's watch. Look at that right foot. You see that right ankle turn on the way out. Number two on Horn. Oh, he got hit before the game ever started. Took three stitches above that eye as of a headbutt with a teammate in the pregame drill. He's taking a beating tonight. Proctor off the catch. Wants to drive it for two. Great recognition by Tyrese Proctor. Not that the three would have been a bad shot, but attacking the basket, getting the layup was even better. As two defenders stayed with Flip. And the Duke fans in the house, and there are plenty coming to life here. They pulled it within two. Horn, and he takes a shot. A foul against Duke here. Proctor gardening really close. That'll be number one. Uh, Tyrese Proctor. Bill Covington having a conversation with DJ Horn after the call. DJ placed the basketball. He didn't push it into Proctor's chest. He just lightly placed it there, which of course is a no-no in the game. Love the fact that the officials having the conversation and not handing out a technical foul. However, if it happens again, they will be quick to hand out the tee. Horn on the inbound. Trying to drive and shovel that pass to Middlebrooks. Marcel, a determined drive, and down it goes, plus the foul. That was a tough shot. That was absolutely a tough shot and a tough move by Casey Marcel getting downhill, playing in front of 25 friends and family here, watching him at home. And of course, his other friends and his family on the sidelines celebrating the strong movement. Of course, you always got to have a flex in there, Ravi. You must. That's what I do when you make one of those big time calls and when you show off the pipes. I'm over here flexing behind you. Most people can't see that, but it's actually happening. And thank God they can't. <laughs> well, McCain has just been hit with another foul. That's going to be number four. On Jerry McCain. And now TJ Power into the game in a tough spot simply because it's going to be difficult for him to defend any of these high power guards for the Wolfpack. 11 minutes to go. Filipowski finding a body on Burns. Got it back. He finished it. He earned that one big time. He absolutely did. Great job defensively by DJ Burns as they both go back smiling down the floor. Burns did his job, but Flip just did his better. And the pass to the 20s, 10 for 15 from the floor. Marcel, long range, can't bring it. He might tap out high, Marcel grabbed it. He got there first and finished it last. With the slam. 55-50. Filipowski touching it every time down the floor. As he should. Draws the whistle there, and it almost rolled in. He'll be headed to the line. They'll get Middlebrooks for number two. The offensive glass, Ben. Middlebrooks tapping it back out to Casey Morsell, who sees a wide open lane, goes in, flushes it with two hands to build the lead back up to five for the Wolfpack. And Raleigh Filipowski went off for 22 points and nine rebounds, having an even better game this time. Of course, last year won the ACC tournament most valuable player. But he is in a dogfight tonight. Another free throw on the way, makes 67%. And one of two. Right now, I would expect to see Kevin Keats find a way to get TJ Power involved in movement to see if he can find a way to defend Casey Morsell, who's caught in fire here over the last few possessions. Morsell with it. There it is. At the foul line, slamming on the brakes. Shot clock to five. Horn with a leaner. No, Middlebrooks 
It did touch iron. Reset of the shot clock. Not that it mattered because Taylor was ready to fire. That'll be in the first half with the Blue Devils all over the offensive glass. But now Ben Middlebrooks, Muhammad Diar starting to flex their muscle on the offensive glass. Roach really hunting contact. No whistle. Torn away by Middlebrooks. And a foul against Duke. Ben Middlebrooks making a difference. The 6'10 junior coming off the bench. Absolutely. Ben Middlebrooks crashing the glass offensively, but more importantly, strong with the basketball. Delivers a strike outside to Jaden Taylor, who knocks down the three ball. Guys, to revisit what Coach Shire told me before the game, even though they saw this team 10 days ago, this is a more dangerous Wolfpack group because they're playing connected. They're playing more confident. He said when DJ Horn missed the first round, this team understood their role, how they could impact the game. We're seeing them very connected. All but one player has scored on their roster. It certainly happened here in Washington. The cell has a shot go in and out because really they weren't playing great in terms of wins and losses. They lost four straight games coming into the ACC tournament, and in those four games, they lost a turnover battle as well. But they have been on top of things here since they've come to D.C. McCain back in, four fouls, lost the dribble, and lost the basketball. That's out of bounds. And not a lot going right at the moment for the number two seed, Duke Blue Devils. It's been a tough evening thus far for Jared McCain. However, he's one of those guys that he'll stick with it, continue to fight this fight. But give the Wolfpack a lot of credit for the way they've defended the all-rookie selection. Although when he gets hot, look out. Eight threes at Florida State. You and I were there for that record performance. One doubled it down to Middlebrooks. Try the other side of the rim, but no. Duke to run. McCain wants that paint and a whistle. Foul here against NC State. Stops the clock with 8.19 to go. The foul on Morcel is number three. McCain, an 87% foul shooter. Obi, I've been in that spot before. Especially as a first year as a freshman coming out and playing in the ACC tournament. In that first game, I can remember my first game in the ACC tournament, I was 5 for 20 from the field. Things did not go well for me. 5 for 20 five for, for 20. the game. For the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I got good, good looks. <laughs> wow. But with Jared McCain, things haven't gone well for him. However, he still has the opportunity to make a difference in this game. A blood issue, I think, here. As Middlebrooks came out to get some attention. Yep. On that hand, he has been a whirling dervish here tonight for Coach Keats. He really has. What a luxury Kevin Keats has to be able to have a guy like Ben Middlebrooks to go out and give him quality minutes with DJ Burns unable to play extended minutes in this game. Ben Middlebrooks has given them all the energy and effort that he's needed. Well, as Jay Billis would say, it's not the ACC tournament. If somebody's not bloody. Now, that is a great point. And Jay's been around a lot of ACC tournaments. Well, you both have, know. You both know very, very well. 8 19 to go. And O'Connell's being called over by Ron Groover. I believe he can't come into the game quite yet. There's two shots on the foul. So DJ Horn has to stay on the floor till after the first shot. And then at that point, there can be a substitution. So Horn lingering. On the floor, right next to Kevin Keats. And it'll be McCain at the line to shoot two. Freshman from Sacramento, California. And now O'Connell in. And DJ can go take a seat. An ailing hip kept him out of game one against Louisville as it turned out they played really well without him he came back and scored 16 last night he played 36 minutes in the first game against Duke he only had eight points in that contest it has been much better tonight Taylor back for Middlebrooks into the double and now Mitchell begging off Taylor in the corner Proctor comes over to guard him. Shot clock at eight. Taylor got it up to Mitchell with the deflection. 
Great job defensively by the Blue Devils on that possession. More importantly, playing without fouling. Getting away with the block shot. Now an opportunity to cut into this lead. Roach off a great fake. Out for McCain. He's free for three. Oh! It's not been his night. Rebound batted around a bunch of times and out off the new Blue Devils. Yeah, the numbers, he's more concerned about the W. And he does have four assists in the game. Filipowski with the 21, the rest of the Duke team, 31 points Obian, combined. In that game on March 4th, Jeremy Rose, 21 points for him. He was the Robin to flip Batman in that one, but hasn't been able to get it going here this evening. Back for Burns. Burns trying to spin to that arm, it's tapped up and in. But the mistake, and you see the frustration from Flip. Mark Mitchell trying to come over and block the shot. As a shot blocker, when you go for that, if you don't get it, it opens up the backside from offensive rebound. That was easy pickings for DR. Filipowski determined to get under there into a double. DR slaps it away. Horn pulls it back. Smart play by Horn. Don't have numbers. Nothing going there. That's going to be the foul. Filipowski. Wow. In a chintzy one. 6.41 to go. Number three on the seven foot sophomore. Take a look. As you see, Filipowski just holding on, impeding the progress of DJ Burns. And as he stays close, Clarence Armstrong close enough to be able to make that call. DR wants a long one. And Duke crashing the glass, but down by eight with six and a half minutes to go. Filipowski stepping into a triple. O'Connell with the rebound. Sees DR up ahead. Back for Marcel for the slam. And that's the biggest lead tonight for NC State. Up by 10. 62-52. Mitchell got it up there despite some contact. And he drops it a pair. NC State, the number 10 seed up against the number two. DJ Horn. And look at Casey Marcel getting in the mix. Oh, look at Diara to free it. And this is the third game in the third day for these Wolfpack. However, they have been quicker to the loose balls. More energy for the team in red than it has been for the team that's rested. Six to shoot. Horn to Marcel. Trying to fake. Spin on Mitchell. Hit it. Back up to 10. Casey Morsell, fifth year. DJ Burns, fifth year. DJ Horn, fifth year. They don't want him to end right here, OB. These guys are trying to keep playing. They look like a very different team than the first time they faced the Mitchell. Well, knocked down a three. And that's the third time he's made them pay for daring him to take that shot. Big bucket for Mark Mitchell, who's up to 16. NC State making a huge difference on the glass in this half. Six offensive rebounds in this half and 11 second chance points. Horn close in will draw the foul. DJ Horn, a really good foul shooter, will head to the line once he catches his breath. Yeah, he, he told his team, hold up one second, let me get the chance here to rest. Proctor's third foul. And Horn to shoot. And it's down to 449. Horn 82%. Average about 18 points a game in ACC play. The pack not as good here at the free throw line tonight as they have been throughout the tournaments. Only 7 of 10 from the charity stripe. This is a team that dominated the free throw battle as DBC DJ Horn missed two. Boy. And that could be costly. Those look like tired foul shots. Yeah, we got to bring up the fact that he did not play game one. He is nursing a hip flexor. Filipowski waiting outside for the ball, but Mitchell gets it in the lane. Hills driving and scoring. Five straight points for Mark Mitchell. 
He has shown up in a major fashion for the Blue Devils here as of late. They haven't gotten the production from the backcourt they're used to. DJ Burns again. And another foul. So now OB. The cheap foul that Flip got battling with DJ Burns, that was three. So now this is four. Four fouls, 414 remaining. And this is when you look at it and say, those are the fouls you have to stay away from, Flip. You're too important to, to this team. You've got to be on the floor. Now he's playing with only one foul or a disqualification. There's 21 points, 12 rebounds, but now four personals. And another miss here at the line for the Wolfpack. First couple of games, they were shooting about 82% collectively. They had made 53 out of 64 in the first two. Another one for Burns. And that one he gets. Middlebrook's back in now for the Wolfpack, and Burns will take a seat. And that play, this substitution is to get to the media timeout. You want Middlebrook's on the floor defensively to try to slow down Mark Mitchell, who has gotten going here on the last few possessions. 4.05 left in Washington. Great hands Mitchell. by Diara. Knocked away, Morsell collects it. And the Wolf back on top, 65-59, and with the ball. Keats calling out a play from the sideline. Casey Morsell. Looking to get a shot in the air. Six seconds on the clock. He's determined to take it. Off the window, no. It comes right to Diara. And it drops in. And hung up there forever and fell. The unsung hero for this Wolfpack team, Muhammad Diara, getting the job done on both ends of the floor. Filipowski going straight along and made it. He'll be heading to the line. A money shot for Filipowski. 3.11 to go. As we go to break, we'll take you inside the huddle of Kevin Keats moments ago. Get back, guard the three. They're getting too many wide open threes, fellas. Let's go. They're not going to miss them all. Hey, take your shots, please. We're not in shot clock desperation. We got time. Move the ball. Has done the job offensively and defensively this entire game. Four offensive rebounds for Mohamed Diara, who has played 34 minutes in this game. Filipowski will be at the line. And looking to finish up a three point play. 23 points, 12 rebounds for Filipowski. He also added three steals tonight. Pressure here from Duke broken by yeah. NC State. So here's the thing right now, Obi, when, when Duke is going to pressure you, if you've got numbers, you got to attack. This is not the time of the game to bring it out and use a bunch of clock and allow Duke to set their defense. You get an opportunity, you have to take advantage of it. Still keep your foot on the gas pedal. Horn backing away, taking a better look at that shot clock. And drills the jumper. Mark Mitchell, that look in his eye. Well, and he got to his rhythm dribble. Mark Mitchell has to find a way to disrupt his rhythm. He allowed DJ. DJ Horn has made that shot a thousand times in the gym by himself. 16 points tonight. Proctor looking to answer, leaning in, and it'll roll home. That's a tough bucket by Proctor, and once again, attacking the basket, not settling for the jump shot. Fast approaching two minutes left in this quarterfinal. And the number two seed in trouble. Proctor on Horn. It's Filipowski out to guard Horn. That opens up Burns at the foul line. Shot clock to four. Back to the big fella. Got to get a shot in the air. And that'll roll off. That time the rim did not help the Mitchell running the floor and draws the foul. He wanted so badly to make that lay in, but he'll be at the foul line with a minute 46 to go. Love the pass from Jeremy Roach, keeping his eyes up, not even dribbling the basketball, seeing a teammate cutting to the basket. Mark Mitchell with a nice run 
Of course, he would love to have finished that had the and one, but still opportunity to cut into the lead at the free throw line. 65 percent foul shooter. He's got two shots coming. And time running down here in this quarterfinal. And a miss. And coming up tonight, 11:30 Eastern, the Nothing But Net crew will have the complete breakdown of today's ACC tournament quarterfinal games. This is the third game of the day. Another one to come at 9:30. That's Virginia and surprising Boston College. Oh, dude, there is a squad in this building today. You talk about Andrea Carter at the point guard. Joel Berry off the ball, Luke Hancock, Jay Williams, the Carlos Boozer. That team can win some games. You're in that lineup. No, nah, no, nah, not with these hips. Well, I didn't mean now. <laughs> 127 to play. Burns wants the paint, swooping in and then lays it home. Oh, and even worse, Kyle Filipowski limping out of that scrum. Yeah, slow to get across midcourt. Little gimpy. 71 64. Proctor. Great defense while Connell getting over that screen. 10 to shoot. Filipowski dribbling away. Six to get off a shot. Roach has it knocked away. And that was with 3.6 on the shot clock and 54.4 left in the game. And a timeout for Duke. NC State closing in 70 head coach John Shire was asking for a review on that deflection. Yes, John Shire had a conversation with Clarence Armstrong about that last possession. He wanted to make sure that that basketball went to the Blue Devils. And of course, under two minutes, you can go back and review any play as you see Jeremy Roach attacking the basket. And that basketball looks as though it stays off of Rose. Casey Morsell absolutely got a hand in, but he does not touch it on the way out. He did not. And I believe the call on the floor was NC State's basketball. And I believe it's going to stay that way because Jeremy Roach's left hand seems to be the last to touch that. Definitely didn't touch it as far as we could tell there with that right hand. So the ruling is NC State ball with 54.4 seconds to go. Ron Groover, Bill Covington, and Clarence Armstrong, the crew here for game number one. And we'll take their time to get this absolutely right and we are hearing it's going to remain NC State ball and that that's the right call it did touch Jeremy Roach's left hand last now there was some contact on it <laughs> so was. again if they could have gone back and called the foul I believe they would have seen that but there was contact absolutely on that but you can't go back and change that I'll explain that to John Shire Oh no, it will stay Duke's basketball. I'm gonna say, yeah, I'm gonna say, it yeah, will be Duke, Duke ball. Yeah, Duke yeah. Will be, it will be Duke with the basketball. It must have been called Duke's basketball on the floor. So he gave it back over to Duke. Here. That's a tough oh, shot. Victor can't get that one to go. Diara went up for the rebound and another whistle with 50.7. And Roach slow to rise. But that was a rush shot from Proctor. He never got square, never got settled on that one. And had more time than I believe he thought he did coming off that end. The execution was perfect. Just never got his shoulders square to the basket trying to take that three. So Diara with a one and one. Roach with his third foul. And front rims it. Duke has to hustle. Proctor to the paint. Tipped up and in by Filipowski. 
Great touch by Flip there as Proctor now runs away with the gingerly. He's going to keep fighting out there, but. Horn gets it up ahead. You got to finish it. And middle block. Oh! Not and he gets it. He hung on the rim also. He, he hung on the rim. Missing the dunk wide open, as open as you can be. Now, as the officials confer, are they going to look at this as a technical foul? Now, Bill Covington's coming over. It couldn't go any worse for the Wolfpack on that possession. What should have been an easy two points ends up being a technical foul. You see Ben Middlebrooks hanging on the rim. So that will send the Blue Devils to the free throw line wow. for two shots and the possession back in what is a five-point game. Forgive me, will just be a one shot. A one shot technical foul. For hanging on a rim after blowing the slam. And had a chance to really pretty much ice this thing. That is a huge play. Now you give the Blue Devils opportunity. To put a point on the board. And I was yelling, you got yelling, you got to finish this. But this is a disaster for the Wolfpack. You give the Blue Devils an opportunity to score without the clock running, which is not their friend right now. With 30.3 on the clock. Surprising that Jared McCain is stepping to the line in comparison to Jeremy Roach in this spot. McCain 87 percent and gets that one. That's the one with 30.3. So 71-67. So it will be NC State's ball, however, because there was no possession after the play. So it will be NC State's ball because of the possession, the arrow. possession arrow. So NC State will take it after this timeout. Uh, what a wild conclusion here. A four point game. Middlebrooks has to shake that one off. <laughs> he absolutely does. I am shocked. Those are the type of plays that can really destroy your confidence with 30.3 remaining in this game to be able to go out and finish this game. I'm sure the basketball will be in the hands of DJ Horn, Michael O'Connell, the guards, but it was a great opportunity for Ben Middlebrooks to seal this thing for the most part for the Wolfpack, unable to take advantage of it, allowing the Blue Devils to put a point on the board, but they still have to get a stop defensively. Let me go back to the beginning of the broadcast. You were talking about what it would take for NC State to upend the Duke Blue Devils here tonight, the ingredients that would go into it. And those ingredients have come into play. DJ Horn, but also Casey Morsell, Michael O'Connell going to work. Kyle Filipowski got in trouble in the first half, now playing with those four fouls. The turnover battle tied at 9-9, nine to nine, but crashing the offensive glass has been the key. 18 second chance points for the Wolfpack. Mohamed Diar has been a difference maker, and of course, the Wolfpack can't be scared, and they were not coming into this opportunity against the rival Blue Devils. So 71-67, our last quarterfinal coming your way tonight at 9.30, scheduled at 9.30. It'll run a little bit late. Virginia and Boston College. BC, the number 11 seed. Virginia, the number three. We'll see if we have an upset in this quarterfinal in the last half minute of the play. And Filipowski on the bench. Yeah, with those four fouls on a defensive possession, you don't want to have him in the game, especially knowing that you may have to foul. Well, down four, you absolutely have to foul if you don't get a turnover here. 20 seconds on the shot clock. You cannot allow the Wolfpack to run down this time. So it'll be O'Connell to put it in for the baseline. Stewart right in his face. At 
and looking for a cutter. He does bounce for Diara and a whistle as he made his way to the basket. 29.9 on the clock. And that'll go against Proctor. That's number four on Tyrese Proctor to put Diara to the line. And again, 65%. He's looked better than that. Two out of three tonight, but huge shots here. And too strong with the first one. There's different with 29.9 remaining. And you're nursing a four-point lead as Kyle Filipowski checks back into the game. Still a two-possession game, but a big free throw here. They've missed five of their last six free throws, NC State. And he missed the pair. Proctor. Filipowski turning, going in strong, and he's got two more. 71-69. 17 seconds, Diara with it. Horn will draw the foul from behind. Filipowski. Filipowski just fouled out. He did indeed. But Filipowski felt as though he got all ball on that possession. Kyle Filipowski has fouled out. 15 seconds to play. DJ Horn. Great look. Foul there. Hard to see if he got the arm or any contact on that one. Well, Filipowski played a great game. 28 points, 14 rebounds. But he is done. And I love Horn headed to the line. Love the decision by the Blue Devils on the last possession to attack the basket. For a number of reasons. One. The Wolfpack have missed a lot of free throws as of late, so they're not going to be as confident at the line. However, this guy right here, DJ Horn, has ice running through his veins. It's the big first one, 72-69. They have still a one-possession game. And right now, this is the important free throw to try to make it a two-possession game. Number two for DJ, indeed. Up by four, and another timeout. It would not shock me at this point, OB, to see Kevin Keats have some full court pressure up. One, you don't want to allow the Blue Devils to be able to race the ball down the floor with a lot of time and get a good look at the basket. So if there's some type of pressure in the backcourt, I'm sure that won't be a trap. However, you want to be able to slow the Blue Devils down, not allow them to easily get the basketball inbounds and advance it. So look at a reset. The eyes of Kyle Filipowski as the free throws went in. As he has fouled out of this quarterfinal. A valiant effort on his part. And we rewind back to the foul he got on the sideline against DJ Burns that had nothing to do with the play. And again, it's small things, but those small things add up when you're the best player on the floor and your team needs you in those final 30 seconds. Remember, it was Kyle Filipowski who just got the basket to give the Blue Devils 69 before committing his fifth foul. So 15 seconds left. Here's Proctor. Hard drive. The reverse won't go. Diara cradling it. Mitchell fouls him with seven seconds left. And the NC State faithful begin to sense it. Seventy three sixty nine and Diara back to the line. The six ten junior to shoot two. Tonight two for five at the foul line. And that one off the ten. 
So he made a couple early. Now he's missed a number. Two for six. And his second will go to make it 74 69. OB, the game plan has been executed perfectly by the Wolf Pack throughout this game. Power from the corner, no. Proctor gets it back. That ball dropped, and NC State wins it over Duke here in the quarterfinals. They knock off the number two seed. They eliminate the Duke Blue Devils 74 to 69. Give Kevin Keats and his staff a tremendous amount of credit. The game plan, more importantly, the execution and the buy-in from his players. This is a team that came into the ACC tournament having lost four consecutive games, and now they've won three in a row here in D.C. and will find themselves in the semifinals tomorrow. Well, the first double-digit seed to reach the ACC semifinal since NC State and Miami did it in 2000.